In Austin, lawmakers made moves toward overhauling the state's child protective services program. Yeah, this case, the deadly beating of Leliana Wright, prompted many to question how the system failed her. Wright is one of dozens of children who died in Texas last year in spite of being on CPS's radar. Lawmakers have promised now to take action. Fox 4's Diana Zoga joins us with more on three bills that passed unanimously today. Diana. Heather, an overhaul of the state's child welfare system is one of Governor Greg, Greg Abbott emergency items this session and today both the House and Senate each debated on how exactly to do that tackling a problem that has had deadly consequences. She wasn't given a chance. Elisa Clakely's granddaughter never had a chance to graduate, get married or have a family of her own. Leliana Wright didn't even make it to kindergarten. She was four years old when she was tortured and beaten to death last March in her Grand Prairie home. A grand jury indicted the mother and her boyfriend, who are already on the Child Protective Services radar. If they would have listened to us, if they would have given us a chance, she would still be here. I know it. Wright's death last March helped shine a spotlight on CPS backlogs. Wright's caseworker, for example, was juggling around 70 cases far more than the recommended 12. And so when a child is removed, there's a hearing all over in 14. Debates on the Senate and House floors in Austin today ended with votes in favor of moving forward on three bills. A Senate bill passed would create community-based programs to contract with the state to handle casework. It would also require children to have a medical exam within three days of entering the system. House representatives passed two bills that would give payments to relatives taking care of kids and their family who have been abused. Another would make the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services a standalone agency rather than a department under Health and Human Services. I think an agency that's a standalone agency that's subject to review by the public and doesn't have necessarily the cloak of immunity that CPS does in many instances, might necessarily become much more responsive. Marilee Lewis, a former family court judge now in private practice, says the move could help the agency be more flexible and efficient. But Lewis adds there's also a need to have minimum standards for the kind of education and training all employees, from intake to investigations and casework, have to have in order to best safeguard kids. Lewis says she would see two very different recommendations on similar cases when she was a judge in her courtroom and sometimes from a caseworker with a degree unrelated to child care or development. The two House bills passed today will now go to the Senate, the Senate bill to the House. Heather. All right, Deanna, thank you.